This video is just for you kids. I'm going to show you how you can take notes using Sermon Notes for Kids. So if you have this book or you're thinking about purchasing it, then I'm going to give you some ideas on how you can take notes using it. There are seven different note-taking activities in the book, and for the most part, they go from easiest to hardest. So the first one is Scripture Scribe. And with this one, you write the date, and the main reference or the Bible passage that the preacher is preaching from. And what you're going to do is in your best handwriting, you're going to copy those verses or even just pick one or two of the key verses if he's preaching from a longer passage. And be sure to use your best handwriting. And if your parents will let you, it is so helpful to be able to underline in your Bible the verse that you're copying. It helps keep you from losing your place. So that's Scripture Scribe. The next one is Keyword Alphabet. With this one, you're going to listen for key words in the sermon and tr for as many letters of the alphabet as you can find. So you are not going to find a letter or a key word for every single letter of the alphabet and that is okay because I really don't want you writing down words that don't mean anything to the sermon or their little small words. I want you to listen for significant words about what the preacher is preaching on. And then near the end of the sermon or even on your way home from church with your parents' help, take a couple of those keywords and write a sentence using those words that sum up what the sermon was about or what you learned about the sermon. Then we have keyword search. So it's similar to alphabet search, except for this one, it does need a little bit of advanced preparation um, and your parents' help. But you're going to want to have some keywords that you're going to listen for listed. And then next to each of those keywords, as you hear them, you'll write a tally mark. There we go. You'll write a tally mark for each time you hear the word. And then any words that you hear that you didn't understand or know, just spell them as best you can and write them in the box. And your parents can explain those words to you after church and maybe on the way home. And down at the bottom is a place for you to list all the different references in the Bible that your pastor mentions or has you turn to in your Bible. So that one. And you want, your parents can come up with some keywords pretty easily if prior to the sermon, maybe in the bulletin, it's listed the main passage that the preacher will be preaching from or even the title of the sermon, especially with the title. And you can even ask the pastor what his, the title of his sermon is going to be for that day. But then you can, your parents can pretty much pull some keywords out of there and that you can work with. The next one is Keyword Hangman. Now this one is not for taking notes during the sermon, but I'll tell you, we have a lot of fun with this one. You know, sometimes it is very hard to sit still during the sermon because they do seem very long at times, especially for children, but you can do it. And especially near the end of the sermon, if you've been taking notes and doing a good job listening, then play Keyword Hangman with your brother or sister or with your parents. And how we do this is, I play it with my kids, what we'll do is I will mark out the spaces for a keyword phrase. I usually do a phrase just because it helps the hangman game last longer. And then you can do this without even talking, without saying a word. So my, my son or daughter will go ahead and circle whatever letter that they want to guess to fill in the phrase. After they circle the letter, then I put a slash through it and put the letter either where it belongs in the space or I begin to mark something up here. Now sometimes I get kind of creative with what I do up here Sometimes I'll start the lines to do a star, or maybe I'll start to do an outline of a church and with a steeple and the roof and the building, so I like to get creative with that. But then we continue on until they have figured out what the phrase is. And then I have them sit and think of a sentence or two that, that just explains to me what that phrase meant in the sermon or what they learned from it, what was significant about it. The next one is Sermon Illustrator. And this one's one of my favorites. I use this one the most myself. And a couple of my kids really enjoy this. But there's three different boxes there for you to draw pictures of what the sermon is about. Some sermons are very easy to draw pictures of, especially if the pastor's preaching from a story in the Bible. And sometimes it's not so easy, but you can do it. You just have to be really creative. I'm going to show you one. This happens to be my son's book that he, he takes notes in. But here's one that he did. This one is Jesus at the temple preaching. Here he is inside the synagogue and preaching to the people. This one happened to be when the demon-possessed 
uh, person, I think it was a woman, in the back of the in the synagogue started to yell out at Jesus. And so there was a conversation going on. And then there was a picture, couple drawings of a couple miracles that Jesus did. So that, there's one that my son illustrated. He's 10. The next one, and probably the most difficult one, is sermon outline. And with this one, you're going to write down the main points of the sermon. Now, some preachers make it pretty easy for you, and they tell you as they preach, they tell what those main points are. Some do not, and it can, it can take some detective work to try and figure out what those are. But the more you practice using that and listening for those main points, the better you'll get at picking them out. Then the last section is for taking notes however you would like. So it's just called Sermon Notes. And this one, half the pages are lined and the other half of the pages are unlined. So there's different options you can do with this one. You could use the unlined pages. Let's say you've used up all your hangman or all the sermon illustrator and you would like to more space for that. You can use the unlined pages here. Or maybe you've used up all your keyword searches and or you like to write out scripture. You have more space for that. Or even better, maybe you'll come up with your own way of taking notes, something new. Well, if you do that, I definitely would like to hear about it. And you can contact me. My web address is inside the book on the copyright page, truthstepspublishing.com. You can contact me through there. And I would love to hear if you come up with some new creative way for taking notes. Then there's a couple bonus sections in the back. If you have a missionary come to your church and give a presentation, well, there's a page just for that, for listening to the presentation of a missionary. Also, if you ever sit with your parents in a prayer meeting, there's a page for that. Or maybe you go to a kid's type of prayer meeting. There's a page or a section just for that. And then there is a page for communion, which is also called the Lord's Supper or the Lord's Table. And for with this one, the purpose of communion is to be remembering what Christ did for us. So this is just a one-page guide to let you know how you can best remember to help keep your mind from being distracted and thinking about other things. This will be a guide for you on keeping your mind remembering about Christ. And there's also an extra page with some blank lines for your parents. They can write in maybe their own ideas of what they would like for you to be thinking about during communion. Last, in the very back of the book, is a guest speaker log. So every time you have a different preacher preaching, after the service, why don't you go up and have him sign his name and write down his favorite Bible verse. And if you're really brave, you could show the pastor your notes that you took during the sermon. So a lot of times my kids like to take notes using more than one page. And that's great. Go ahead and do that. Um, especially if the sermon seems to be getting long. If you're taking notes in one particular way, maybe it's the illustrator or the sermon outline, and you're just needing a break, uh, maybe jump ahead to the al keyword alphabet or the hangman, as I had mentioned. So it is okay to take notes using more than one of the pages for a sermon. So I would love to hear from you if you have great ideas about the, how to take notes or would like to share even some of your notes with me. I would love to hear about that. So be sure to contact me if you have any.